Okay, this is the last lesson, y'all, that I'm ever going to teach you. I hope you're as sad as I am. 11-5, the normal distribution. Um, it's kind of fun, kind of like putting pieces of a puzzle together. Not really a lot of math calculation um, or thinking too hard. But we are going to talk about the normal distribution. Um, y'all have heard of the normal curve, the bell curve, all those uh, different names for the same thing. But some of the characteristics you might not have realized, so I'm going to point them out to you. Okay, as I just said, it's continuous, it's bell-shaped, it's symmetric w with respect to the mean. The mean, median, and mode are all equal and located at the center of the graph. Okay, the curve approaches but never touches the x-axis. I don't know why, sorry about that. Um, and the total area under the curve is equal to 1 or 100%. Okay, the area under the normal curve re represents the amount of data within a certain interval or the probability that a random data value will fall within that interval. So this is a better picture of what you might have seen before. Okay, you know this. This is our normal curve here. Okay, so... What we have is something called the empirical rule. Some people refer to it. I don't know too many, but 68, 95, 99.7, because those are the percentages of, um, associated with this curve. Okay. We have in the past talked about mean. This is the symbol mu for mean. This little symbol here, sigma, is stands for standard deviation. It tells you right here. Mean is mu. Standard deviation is little sigma. Okay. So your mean is in the middle, and the normal curve, as I said, it's symmetric. So half is over here and half is over there, which is what a lot of people tend to forget about that middle piece, okay? That is 0.5 or 50%. So these are all percents here. Um, and what this is telling you is that if it's 0.34 here or 34% here, 34% there, then 68% of our data lies in this interval. And then when you go out to the next standard deviation, you will have 13.5% on both sides. So if you go out two standard deviations, you will be within 95% of your data. And if you go out three standard deviations, you will be 99.7% of your data, which surely you can see that's most of it. Okay. So the corresponding decimals that go with each of these standard deviation marks. Okay. I just wrote those under there. Okay. So let's go see how you're going to have to answer some questions with this. So this first one, a normal distribution has a mean of 8.2 and a standard deviation of 1.3. So when I get that, okay, I am a visual. Okay. So I like to see the picture of it. So this is my normal curve and what's in the middle is my mean and that's 8.2. And if they tell me I have a standard deviation of 1.3, then I'm going to add 1.3 to get the next number and add 1.3 again and add 1.3 again. And then I'm going to subtract 1.3 and subtract 1.3 and subtract 1.3. So now let me go up a little bit so I don't cut it off. It's easy to see, okay, when it says find the range of values that represent the middle 95%, well, those are the numbers within two standard deviations of my mean. Well, this was one standard deviation, and this is two standard deviations. So the answer, the range of values, is going to be from 5.6 to 10.8, and that's how we write it. Now, what percent of my data will be less than 4.3? Okay, 4.3 was three standard deviations, Okay, so they're asking what percent is over here. Well, that's what this number is right here. And if they ask me for percent, I have to change that decimal to a percent. And when I change it to a percent, you move it two places to the right. So my answer is going to be 0.15%. Okay. All right, let's look at a few more problems. We have networking sites. Okay, so... The number of friends per member in a sample of 820 members is normally distributed with a mean of 38 and a standard deviation of 12. Okay, so you know me. I'm going to go ahead and put my little chart up here 
Let's see where I put it. Uh, right there. Okay. What is my mean? A mean of 38 and a standard deviation of 12, which means I know all of these number, other numbers. So 38 plus 12, plus 12, plus 12, minus 12, minus 12, minus 12. Okay. So I kind of know how, where everything falls. About how many members have between 26 and 50 friends? Well, that's right there. That is within one standard deviation. And these are the percents that correspond to that. Okay. So that is 0.68 or 68%. However, you got to pay attention y'all because this one actually says how many members. It does not say what percent. So the percent is 0.68, but 0.68 of the total number of members that we have, which is 820. So when you multiply that out and round to the nearest whole member, because we cannot have half of a member or six tenths of a member. So my answer is 558 members. Okay. So you got to read those questions carefully when you take your quiz. All right. This one says, what is the probability? So in this particular problem, all right, I'm at, it's asking for a probability. So that means our answer should not be more than the number one. Okay. What is the probability that a random member will have more than 14 friends? Okay. More than 14. 14 is right here. So you've got a couple of choices, y'all. Um, you can either go add up all those that are more than 14, or I choose to add up these two because I'm only adding up two numbers. So I'm going to take the 0 0.0015 and the 0 0.1, uh, excuse me, 0 0.0235 and find out that that is equal to 0 0.025. Okay. But that's not what is more than 14. That's what is what is less than 14. And remember, all of these are going to add up to 1. So I'm just going to subtract that from 1 and get an answer of 0.975. So that's my answer. Sorry about that. Okay. Part C, what is the probability? Okay. So again, this one is asking for probability. So I'm going to have an answer less than 1. What's the probability that three randomly selected members will have more than 14 friends? So three randomly selected members. Well, we just answered part B was the probability that one random member will have more than 14. If I want to know about three of them, then this time I'm actually going to take that to the third power because that's 0.975 times 0.975 times 0.975 because those are independent events, but I multiply them all together. So when you multiply them, you get that long, crazy decimal, round it to three places like we do on our quizzes, and you get 0.927. Okay, the last thing we need to talk about here is the normal approximation of a binomial distribution. Remember, a binomial distribution, y'all, is when we only have two possibilities. It's either true or false or heads or tails or on that multiple choice test, even though you had four choices, only one of them, every answer was either right or wrong. Okay. So consider the binomial distribution consisting of N trials with a probability of P of success on each trial. If N times P is greater than five and N times one minus P. Um, I actually talked about this previously y'all as Q. So Think of that um, as 1 minus P is also Q. That's failure. P is success. Then the binomial distribution can be approximated by normal distribution as long as you calculate the mean, which is N times P, and a standard deviation, which is written like this, y'all. Um, I'm going to actually simplify it and also write it like this, N, P, Q because Q is one minus P. It's a little bit easier to remember. Okay. So look at this problem. Suppose that in, I probably should stop right there. Suppose that in a nationwide poll, 72% of the households owned at least one car. Okay. Y'all that makes it a binomial because you either own a car or you don't. I mean, y'all might think you can own half a car, but you really can't. According to the household, you either own, anyway, we won't get into those semantics. All right, you are conducting a random survey of 129 households. What is the probability that at least 98 of them own at least one car? So 
it is a binomial. I'm still going to have my picture, okay, um, of my normal curve because my normal curve is approximating the. I'm using a normal approximation of a binomial distribution, but I don't know what these numbers are down here because they didn't give me a mean or a standard deviation in here. So that's another clue. I've got to go use this formula and that formula to go find my mean and standard deviation. So um, mean is X bar equals N times P and N in my problem is the number of households, which is 129 and P is my probability of success, which is 0.72. So I multiply those together and I am going to round that and that is going to be my mean. So I have a mean of 93. Now I need a standard deviation because I got to go find out what each of those other marks is. So I have the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the number I just got. That's n times p times 0.28. Okay. How did I get 0.28? It's 1 minus that number. 1 minus that number is that number. 1 minus 0.72 is 0.28. All right. Multiply that out. Take the square root and you get 5.09. So if I add 5 to this 93, that means that's where 98 is. And that is the number that I needed. Okay. It's asking me right here. It won't go. Hold on. It won't let me write. Come on. Here we go. 98. Okay. So it's asking me, what is the probability that at least 98 of them own at least one car? Well, at least one car kind of goes with the beginning thing. So I want to know what's the probability that at least 98, that means 98 or higher. So you can go add these up. Okay. Another one, some people like to think of, okay. Um, is, oh, that's what that is for at least 98. Okay. Remember that from here, whoopsie, there over is 0.5. So if I want everything except for that part right there, I can do 0.5 minus 0.34. Either way, you're going to get the same answer since I'm trying to go that way. And it is 0.16. So that is the answer to our problem. I hope y'all thought that was easy. And I hope y'all had a wonderful year. Thank you so much for listening. And y'all have a great day. Don't hesitate to set up a Google Meet or come see me. Email me if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Bye.